Hello everyone and welcome to week four of HSCI 2103 Health Policy and Health Systems. We're focusing on the art and structure, sorry, the art of structuring and writing a policy an analysis for this week. So I'm going to go through all the various steps that are discussed in the book for writing a policy analysis. And of course, this is your main assignment for this course. This is your main written assignment. So uh, chapter 13 provides detailed steps of how to do this. Um, just briefly, a policy analysis is really focused on providing um, analytical, technical advice to a client. Uh, often the client might be a, a member of Congress or a member of a, a state legislature or uh, a not-for-profit organization interested in supporting or, um, or actually not supporting a certain policy. They may be uh, a healthcare provider, hospital, and or professional association, and so on. So you may have some client that wants you to analyze some particular policy issue. For most of you, you're not going to go down this route. But some of you actually may participate in this process as a, a member of a professional association, or perhaps as part of your uh, company that you work for. So you're trying to figure out what should be the course. What what. Uh, should be the next move with regards to a particular policy issue. So if there's some bill that Congress has proposed, you know, should you support the bill or not? And this chapter gives you a framework for analyzing uh, that particular issue and putting your ideas and thoughts into a structured um, a framework so that you can actually analyze the problem well and come to a conclusion on what should be done or, or not be done and have support for your decision. All right, so in general, the policy analysis as this book conceives it, and there are a variety of different models for how to do this, but the general structure that uh, is discussed in this book is pretty much what other books do. And it, the uh, policy analysis includes five major uh, sections, uh, problem statement, background, landscape, options analysis, and recommendation. In general, this is not advocacy it's uh, it's a, a neutral document it's meant to be objective so the analysis should be uh, as evidence-based as possible this is not uh, an opinion based uh, paper this is not an op-ed this is not you just saying why you personally like or dislike some policy option it's really an assessment of um, the current evidence, um, uh, analyzing different options that uh, exist for a particular policy problem and trying to point to w what supports taking a certain course of action or not. And it's not based on, it should not be based on ideology. However, you could be writing for a client that has some particular ideology, which you have to keep in mind when you're writing about a policy issue. But in general, the goal is to be as objective as possible and as neutral as possible. So keep that in mind when you're writing. Well, um, it all starts with the problem statement. If your problem statement is not strong, it's not well structured, then you're going to have a hard time writing a good paper. And so your assignment for this week is to really work on your problem statement. Usually the problem statement is short, it's one or two sentences, it really defines what problem you're going to look at. So um, you should struggle a little bit with this assignment. Don't just jot down the first thing that comes to your mind and think that that's a, a good problem statement. Actually sit down and, and think about, well, is this really addressing the policy issue that is of interest to me? Uh, is it really uh, capturing the essence of the problem? Or is it uh, a, a, a step removed from the problem? Do I need to think a little more about how I should really frame uh, this problem statement? So, so think hard uh, about what the problem statement should be. Often it's in the form of a question. You don't have to write a question, but usually a question is easier because you can figure out what you're trying to, uh, how, you, how you're trying to answer uh, this particular issue. Sometimes when you just have a declarative statement, it's not really clear uh, how you go about figuring out um, what uh, is the solution for the issue. So often framing uh, the problem statement as a question uh, can be very useful. The, the book talks about it being broad and narrow, but for the class, you really need a focused uh, topic just because we're writing fairly short papers. And as, as before, it should be neutral. Um, and it should be um, 
um, uh, the question should be framed in a way that allows you to create options. So you shouldn't ask a question that's just a yes or no question. You know, should something be done? Yes or no? Uh, the question should be, what are the possible approaches uh, for achieving a certain goal? Right. Uh, so that then you can think about, well, you know, I could try this or I could try that. And so that's the idea is supposed to stimulate thinking about uh, how to deal with some particular policy issue, not just a, a simple uh, or not, not a question looking for just a simple uh, yes or no answer. And uh, finally, don't put your recommendation in the policy, uh, sorry, in the problem statement. Hold back on that uh, for later in the paper. All right, now your background. Background is fairly straightforward. It's similar to background for any other paper. It really just needs to uh, provide all the relevant uh, his historical information, all of the key facts uh, related to the issue um, as you try to really structure, well, what is this problem all about? What are some key stats that are relevant to the problem and so on? For your landscape, this is fairly different. It's not something you typically do in a paper. Uh, the landscape uh, really is a section for you to focus on uh, key stakeholders. So this is something we did in one of the early discussion assignments where we asked you to figure out who are the stakeholders for a particular uh, policy issue and write about how they're going to be impacted by that issue. That was essentially giving you a chance to practice writing a landscape section of a paper. That assignment wasn't wasn't asking for as many details as you would have to put in a paper, but it was still getting you prepped for thinking about this type of issue. So you're going to write down the various stakeholders uh, that are involved and that care about whatever policy issue you're writing about, but you also need to write about the, the issues that should be analyzed and considered uh, that relate to your problem. And as you saw during the discussion assignment exercise, the stakeholders are really going to vary depending on uh, which issue you're attacking, of course. Now, some of the factors that you can consider when you're thinking about how to analyze the problem are here. They're fairly straightforward, political, social, economic, legal, practical factors. So sometimes a policy um, might be perceived or a particular problem that needs to be addressed with policy might be perceived as being harmful to an organization because practically it's going to impact them in some negative way so that they're not going to be able to operate their business for example uh, because of this policy it just it, it just the policy actually doesn't allow them to function and if the policy is trying to improve their functioning then that would be a problem right so sometimes there are these really practical logistic type issues that come up and so think about a variety of different factors that uh, impact how stakeholders are being affected by the problem and uh, how they might uh, be impacted by um, different um, different ways of thinking about uh, this problem this issue all right now after your uh, landscape section you're going to now propose some different options so you've talked about some of the parameters of the problem, you got into the details of who's going to be affected and how, and now you're trying to figure out, well, now given that information, uh, what are the options for actually solving this problem? So now we're finally really getting to the meat, and the reason why you're writing this paper is really to propose these policy options for the very given the various stakeholders that are involved and then you're going to try to figure out well which option is the best so in this options analysis section first you're going to propose your options you're going to say here's policy option one and you're going to write about it and you're going to write about the details of that policy option what's involved in it how is it going to be structured um, uh, and then you're going to then analyze uh, how that option affects the various stakeholders that you've discussed and you're going to then create a chart which I'll talk about here in a second. Uh, the options uh, in general should be um, uh, options that are feasible so these should be something that um, can be acted upon in some way. Um, your book talks about a client. We're not using the client model in class uh, simply because we're, we're not trying to limit you to a certain 
type of uh, client. We're trying to let you really assume the role of an expert, just an independent expert who is advising whoever you want to advise. So you may take the approach that you're trying to advise uh, some state legislator or you may take the approach that you're trying to advise uh, a hospital or some company. Uh, that's that's really up to you. Um, we don't want to limit you to any particular client. We want you to really focus on trying to develop options that will be useful and uh, will will objectively uh, deal with the particular problem you have in a in a logical and evidence-based way. Uh, so you're really trying to work towards just developing the best solution generally based on your analysis and not necessarily developing the best option for a particular client. So it's a, a little more generic uh, for this uh, class exercise. Okay. And uh, as you, after you've created your options, you then need to screen the options in order to get to the best option. So you need to come up with some criteria. And these criteria should be measurable, either um, quantitatively or qualitatively. So you might have some some metrics, some, some data to uh, measure whether or not a particular policy option is effective. For example, you might use the you might use cost data so you might have data showing that one policy option will cost more than others and that will then be one criteria for you so one criteria can be cost and then you might be looking for the option that has the lowest cost another criteria could be more qualitative so you might argue that you need a politically feasible uh, option and political feasibility might have something to do with your understanding of what the legislature that you're dealing with has uh, favored in the past, how wh what the uh, what type of ideology is most strongly represented by the legislature, and you might write about that in a more qualitative way. You might not have uh, exact numbers on how politically feasible something is, but you might have a sense of it based on how legislatures dealt with prior issues. All right. But you can ask more questions about that as we move forward. Uh, but this is just to give you a general sense of what's going on. So after you come up with these criteria, then you're going to try to figure out, well, you know, how do the options compare uh, using these criteria? And the best way to do that is to create a side-by-side -side table. And that's required for this class. And I'm going to show you an example of a side-by-side -side table here. So usually when we make these side-by-side -side tables we have a list of the policy options in the columns uh, sorry in the rows and then we have a list of the criteria for uh, each of the columns so in this case the criteria are cost political political politically feasible sorry uh, increases number of insured people in the state and then a column for overall by overall what I mean is the sum of the various uh, rankings that you have here for each criteria. So I have listed three different policy options. One is status quo, one is policy option one, and one is policy option two. Now what I'm doing here is I'm ranking each of those policy options for the given criteria. So if we look at costs, I'm going to rank each of those policy options based on costs. So policy option two is ranked number one. And you see down in the bottom left-hand corner that one means the best and three means worse. So in this case, uh, I'm ranking policy option one, uh, sorry, policy option two as number one. So that's the best option. And you see I've written some text there as, um, as information to, uh, for anyone looking at this table, they will quickly understand this option costs a certain amount of money. So you can quickly see how much each option costs. So often when people uh, create these tables, they'll provide a number or maybe a word like low, medium, high to rank the various options based on these criteria and then they'll provide some text. So I'm just providing short text here because the slide can really only hold so much uh, but often there, the text will be much longer than this so people may write two or three sentences about why a particular option uh, is being weighed um, um, or is being ranked, sorry, as the best option or the worst option. And you also then discuss this table in the in the option analysis in the options analysis section of your paper. So 
this table will be uh, an easy uh, visual representation of what you're writing about. So often, so you might ask, well, you know, what's the point of doing this table? Well, the point is, if you are developing this policy option, uh, sorry, policy analysis paper for a particular client, the client could easily look at this table and quickly get a sense of what's the best and what's not and why. So they could easily look at this and say, oh, well, you know, I care most about political feasibility, so I'm going to look at that, and now I see, well, the status quo is really ranking the highest uh, for, uh, for being politically feasible, and so that's what I care about the most, and so that's what I'm going to support. Uh, or your client might say, well, I'm looking for the most low-cost option because I'm trying to save money if we're going to make any change here. And they say, well, look, policy option two, cost the least, and so that's what I'm going to stick to. Or they may say, well, I really want a combination of these factors, and I'm looking for the overall best option. And as you can see, when you add up the various uh, rankings, um, the lowest ranking is policy option two, and I have that labeled as the best option down here in the uh, right-hand bottom corner. And your client might say, well, that's really the best option for me. Now, for the purposes of this paper, you are going to use the overall ranking as the best option because that's really the one that takes into account all the factors that you think are important, all these criteria that you think are important, and it comes out on top. And then you're going to write about that option as your recommended. So in this final recommendation section, you're going to choose one of your options. You really already chose the option by creating a side-by-side -side table so the selection is easy unless you have a tie then you may have to go back and uh, do a little more analysis to really figure out whether you have a true tie or if you really need to consider some other factors uh, for a particular option um, people don't usually have a tie but it but it can happen and so you really have to go back and do a little more analysis and, and dig a little deeper uh, to, uh, to figure out whether or not uh, one option is truly better than the other so in this recommendation section you're really going to say why this option is the best uh, you're going to talk about the cons uh, and how those cons should be dealt with for your recommendation uh, you're going to clearly say you know um, why you didn't select the other options so your your client whoever that was whoever that would be would have a sense of uh, why you're selecting your recommendation in this case your professor is just getting a better sense of why you're selecting a certain recommendation now in general uh, we suggest against you saying well options one and options two were good and what I want to do is create a hybrid of those two instead of you saying that as your recommendation what we suggest is that you simply come up with another policy option which is a hybrid of uh, different ideas but don't don't create a hybrid recommendation don't don't list three different policy options and then say well I want a merging of policy option one and two to be my option because you didn't analyze the hybrid what you analyze is those separate options and you compare them so you were picking from those not from the hybrid option so creating a new option for your recommendation doesn't really make sense it, because you didn't put that option through uh, the entire process of uh, the policy analysis paper uh, so so just make sure you don't do that if you do that in your draft we'll let you know that uh, that's not appropriate um, okay so that's just a brief overview of the material for this week if you have any questions, feel free to ask me or Professor McDonald at any time. I know this isn't something you guys do on a regular basis, and we know uh, this is extremely new to many of you, so we expect lots of questions. Uh, we get plenty of questions each, each semester on this process. Uh, so, you know, just, just let it rip and just send us whatever you're thinking about, and uh, we hope you have a good week. Thanks.